The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour on this 11th day of November and certainly to the, to, uh, the vets, uh, you know, our deepest appreciation, obviously. Um, very special. And the Dow's down 35 at 27,646. It was down over 100 points, uh, 100 points deeper than this earlier on. And then Boeing came out and said by mid-December, they should be um, getting certification or at least start the certification process. Uh, we'll see, because I think there's still a couple of little surprises that should, that's what the chart says. There should be a couple more surprises, but we're in a trading band, 320 is probably the major support, and 370 is probably the resistance. So we could continue trading there for a little while longer. Uh, up 11 at 362, 324 was the low of about four weeks ago, around right about the 21st of October, very nice rally. I mean, when you think about 40 points, 11, 12 percent in a stock like this, and uh, they're going to have the, they're trying to have most of the cases uh, represented overseas. I mean, that makes sense for them. The uh, awards would not be the same as here. So we'll see what happens with Boeing. So Boeing did uh, make a peak D top in the Chapman Wave methodology. Remember, D, let me just do this quickly because I've got a webinar coming up Tuesday a week and many people are asking questions and different things. We like to look at the alphabetization from the low bar to count each successively peak. We, we use uh, letters to um, describe the, each higher peak. So it's alphabetically in order, peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D. The fourth highest peak is where other things can happen, can go to E, F, and G, but D is really where, uh, it's the, the one that's probably the one that has the most often deepest corrections. Uh, and I look at patterns either straight up or straight down, single leg, or you get an arch or a cup. You can have a combination. And if it's the arch, then you're looking at the lowercase h. If it takes out the left side low, you can go deeper in the reverse y. If it takes out the left side high, you can go high. Just keep it as simple as possible. So what have we got? We've got Boeing, peak D in the, in the monthly chart, deepest correction. I call it the Chapman Wave um, stalk leg formation. This is the beak. The beak hasn't completed yet. We'll see if that happens. Uh, pretty good when you think 446 to the low of uh, th of 324, uh, 120 points, 22% uh, or something like that, uh, correction with all that bad news, terrible, terrible news. So you've got the D in the, in the monthly chart, you've got right here, G slash B in the weekly at 446.01, um, and you've got a peak E, the last high was a round number high of 391 on the 25th of September, but no, it's the peak D in uh, 380, back in July. More importantly, it was this one right here. Let's just keep going. There it is. A peak D at 446.0 on the all-time high on the 1st of March. I remember discussing this right there. I said, you know, I think that Boeing is going to have a hat-trick top. That is, the monthly chart is close to turning down, but it cannot turn down unless the weekly chart gives a sell signal. And, and that weekly chart in the um, week, weekly chart sell signal couldn't be promulgated unless the daily chart gives you a sell signal to sell mode. Well, it was in a sell signal, and then there was a terrible crash. And then on the 11th of uh, March, so that's more April, May, June, July, August, September, October, and it's November, it's eight months. Wow. So there was that news of the crash, and it plummeted down. It still had a green candle for the day, even though it, it, it gapped huge. Um, it didn't close positive, but it had a green candle, and then it went to a trading band, a rectangle formation. I drew this in, and these are techniques that we're going to be discussing. And it finally goes down to uh, the 324 low that was made. Where was it? Let's keep going. All right, I've discussed those. And so the daily chart set off the weekly chart. The weekly chart went to a sell mode, which started a sell signal in the in the monthly, and that now is in a sell mode with very weak stochastic at 44%. Not, not 
in the 20s, but it is in the 44% area, and the uh, MACD is still uh, quite negative. So as we're looking at this, oops, as we're looking at this, what I am going to tell you is that uh, within the context of uh, within the context of the various rotational um, rotation in the stocks of the Dow, look at this. You've got a UTX. At a big D, just two days, just sideways after this little tiniest doji candle top, leg D in the weekly chart, only leg C in the monthly. However, we spoke about uh, earlier, I did a show with Tommy Jr. Uh, Tom O'Brien was away, so his son Tommy and I were doing the show. And what we are looking at, here, let me just fix this for some reason, it's slipping. Um, what we are looking at is that Disney has gapped up and over the last couple of days every every time the Dow looked like it was about to really drop quite sharply there were one or two uh, stocks that showed strength and Disney was one of them uh, Microsoft I believe was another Microsoft yep there it is holding very nice a good candle Friday um, high level consolidation sideways trying to make slightly higher highs uh, all D, uh, this is a D, this is now an E, and the weekly chart is still D, monthly chart is only a C. So there's still strength going out into the different uh, sectors within the Dow. And let's just do this quickly. Uh, so you've got the S&P. If the Dow takes out uh, 27,420 to 27,380 support in the next couple of days, that's going to be a problem. But I... I'll go through a whole what I'm looking at in a moment, but let's just finish this. S&P holding nicely uh, at 3,083, down nine. It's not uh, participating too well. Boeing's not impacting that very much. 3,059 uh, is the nine period moving average. Support, now I think that's six, 3,069, and then 3,055 is the 14 period exponential moving average. So yes, you can have a little bit higher prices, but I think that we're going to be coming down with slightly lower lows and slightly lower highs. And one of the reasons is, you see the way this nine period moving average, the green line is so far above the black line, the 14 period moving average, but look how the price is still way above it. So to get this green line to turn down and cross negative underneath the black line, it's gonna take at least to 3,047 in the, uh, that's four, it's 500 points in the Dow. It's going to take a lot of points for it to happen. So I think it's a slow process that we're looking at, a slow grind sideways, a limited upside, but probably for the moment limited downside. QQQ, NDX 100, trading at 200.64. Also, peak D, doji candle, but it hasn't broken down. Sideways action, nicely above the nine period and the 14 period moving edge. MACD hasn't turned down. Stochastic is still at 91%, very good. IWM, same sort of thing. Technically, but it is touching the nine period moving average, the green line right now of the peak F, 160.46 high, uh, not an all time high, just a recovery high. Um, the last time it was there was back in April, March, May. May it was at 161.11, and the last high was 160.46. And it must hold 157 this week. If it breaks that, that's a real problem. And now let's just do, uh, do the um, gold. So gold is down seven, not too bad, but it's down 1455. I think that 1433 level is major support. Has to hold that. That's the line we're moving out of the right side chart, the monthly gold contract, continuous uh, price that we're looking at. And the dollar hasn't had a big spike, but it's holding a case just down 20 cents at 18. I'll be right back. That's it. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. All right, we're back. And we're looking at the TLT, the iShares 20 at Treasury Bond Fund, trading at 134.75, down 16 cents. It made a low uh, three days ago, right here. At 133, was it? 134.45. 134.45. Just type that in. One, three, three, nine. Okay. <clears throat> but it broke and closed underneath the left side low of 136.54. If you look at this particular chart right here, and then I show my subscribers to my opening call every weekend, you got your triple yield chart. This is the white is the TYX 30-year T bond yield. At 24.27, the high last week made a new leg B. Huge move from the low that was made at about 19, 19, I don't want to guess. Let me just see what it was. I should have typed it in here. 19.05. Yeah, 19.05 the week of um, the last week of August. And now we're at 24.27. So you came down really sharply, but you've come back pretty quickly. And you're at 24.27 high right now. You're at 24.20. Oh, you're at 24.27 right now. Wait a minute. I must have missed that. 24.43. Sorry, 24.43. I should have typed in. 24.43 was the number from last week, the high. So that says to me, you've got to be a little careful because rates are backing up, and that could impact the housing uh, sector, which is on the right here. The lower square. Uh, HGX Philadelphia Housing Index trading at uh, 349.09. High was 360.68 for peak D. So you remember those peak Ds? There's your peak D and you pull back, started a brand new buy mode, went to a peak D again. And uh, so this is going to be very important how it holds here. And Wood, which is the ICES Global and Timber Forestry ETF, did a real nice bounce. But is it a bounce? Is it one of these again? And all we're doing is going from the lowercase h to a lowercase m, that's the pattern that can unfold, and this is a chance that it could, it could be stuck in a range. If Wood, uh, the uh, trading at 65.21, actually climbs above and closes above 66.92, the high of February the 8th, the week of February 8th, that'll be a really closes. That'll be a really good sign because it's like an engulfing candle covering all the price movement down to the 55.05 low. Uh, and that was made in December, and then bouncing up to the level I just spoke about, the 66s. And now we've had intra-week 
so far only 65.77. So if this week there's a push high, that's going to be important. So I wanted to show that rates are kind of important at this point, plus rumors. Yeah, just stories and rumors and all sorts of things going on, impeachment hearings, or at least discussions, or whatever they're called. Um, we'll, be, we'll see what happens. But have a look at this chart right here. This is the TNX. This is the 10-year yield. So it made a leg F, alternate count. You could call it an alternate count, F slash B, but I'm just for now, I'm calling it an F. We don't have to, we're not doing anything. We're just um, notating it. Leg B in the weekly. There are a lot of charts that we're looking at that have the same pattern. A leg B in the weekly, but leg A in the monthly is a gray A because it's really just a bounce so far. And we'll see. I, I, I believe there's a chance that later on we start to tackle that leg um, in the monthly um, in the TLT which means rates could go lower, but not right now. And 148.90 was the high of August of 2019 at peak C. So as I'm looking at it, I'm saying rates could still be stuck. Look at high-grade copper. If wood, the Aisha's Global Timber Forestry ETF, is having such a good move, why is copper so lousy? Look at this monthly chart. Oh, terrible. Look at the weekly chart. Oh. And we've just had a recycle that's not a, uh, that didn't cross negative. I'm not sure why I had that. That should have been a G slash B. And then you get, let's see what you get, G slash B. And then this will be a C. And there, yeah, there you are. There's your peak D again. Another peak D. And this one here was a chap wave instant research. Very deep, but a chap wave instant nevertheless. Look at that. So as I'm looking at this, my, my thinking here is that A, B, C, D, E. That's wrong. That should be an E. My mistake. That would be G slash G. It's always G slash C. Come on. There we go. G slash C. Right there. This becomes D and that becomes E. So D out. E in. All right. So that's what we're looking at in the... Uh, in the in the uh, high grade copper, a nice move, but just a move, just a little bounce. Okay, a couple of things I want to talk about here. So I've been through that, been through that. Did I do uh, crude oil? Crude oil is uh, down 25 cents, stuck in this range, doing very nicely, uh, going sideways in this rectangle formation. <laughs> But so far, it hasn't really broken out. It will break out if we can get to 58.80, 59.30. That's something different. Um, that's the way I'm looking at it. Where would you start to accumulate the monthly setup on the TLT? Oh, um, I, okay. The TLT, when the TLT rallies, most of the time, you're going to see the stock market, see money come out of the stock market and go into the, sa the, the whippiness of the stock market and go into the so-called safety of bonds. So I'm suspecting that you've got to wait a little longer, but probably I would, because I know you're a longer term uh, purveyor of the TLT, I, I'm going to say to you, just text me or email me again if we get under 133.30. That's when I need to look at it again to see if we're going to go lower or if that's the start of a basing period. But that might also correspond to the Dow not going down all that much. As I say, I want those moving averages to cross negative, and it's going to take a lot of price movement. So, um, But at this particular point, I think you've got time. See this dreaded H in the lowercase h. If you take out that left side low, you've got one to two bars to close above it to save the day. And then the technicals have to really scream to the upside to give you a new buy signal. Otherwise, you're going to make lower lows and lower highs. So for now, I think yields are going to go a little higher. And I think this is that's kind of disruptive. If it wasn't for Boeing right now, I think we'd be stuck in this rate, probably close towards the low of the day. And now with, with Boeing, that makes a little difference. Question about MUR. Uh, what was the MUR again? MUR is Murphy Oil. So nice bounce from the 18s all the way to the 25s, and now it's showing 24.55. Yeah, this is we see the pattern that we're seeing. It's almost like the bonds. I suspect there's a little bit more upside. Then maybe it goes sideways. I don't know if Murphy Oil and the other oils are actually ready to go. Curo is in. Uh, Curo is. Through group holdings, yeah, this was a better one. Even when it took off, it was a better one. It's a much nicer pattern. And that's had a huge IPO from 2017, November, was it? December of 2017, 1350 was the low. Screams up to 
3220 makes a chamber with two bar reversal. 3220, let me just type that in because I'm bound to come back to it. 3220, and then it takes a tumble, goes to a lower low, it goes, oh man, it goes down to the, look at this. It goes all the way, there. is that a nine or an eight? It goes to 874 in December. Oh, that was December, is that 874? And what does it do? It has a really strong bounce in the trading in 1571. I would say that it was 75 percent. Is that what is it? It's a huge move. Um, eight, eight. No, no. What am I talking about? It's eight to 15. Yeah, it's about a 40, a 43 percent, something like that. 43 percent move. It's pretty darn good, but it's just about to get to a leg D in the monthly chart. I, you know, I, I like it. If you're in earlier, I'd say great. But getting in now, oh. I'll do it in a moment. I don't want to say anything out of turn. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman has just announced a live 90-minute webinar he'll be conducting for subscribers to his daily trading newsletter, The Opening Call, which will be taking place Tuesday, November 19th from 5 till 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, titled A Comprehensive Review of the Chapman Wave Techniques and Market Outlook Ahead for 2020. This is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial to The Opening Call while gaining access to Basil's live subscriber event taking place later this month. With some stock picks up 15 to 30 percent this year alone, Basil will review many of the Chapman Wave techniques that helped in their successful analysis, as well as providing the sectors and stocks that he thinks will be of importance heading into 2020. For all the details, check out the opening call on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now is a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. I just had a note uh, from Paul saying, in his, usually very, in his usual very delicate way, capitals, did you know the bond market is closed today? Again, you do not understand bonds. Oh, man, I've just got to learn about bonds. I don't know what it is. Um, anyway, so the bond right now down 230 seconds from some trade, uh, whether it's closed or not, is at 156.11. Uh, 
that's in the lower end. It's gone underneath the dreaded H. I don't have to know about bonds, but I do have to know about my Chapman Wave notations and my chart formations. And uh, you can see this beautiful cup formation in the monthly chart going from uh, the 2016 high. Uh, it comes all the way back down and goes to a low back in 2018. And then it takes off and goes to a new recovery high. I have to call that a peak C. There's nothing else. It should go to a D. That's the way Chapman Wave works, unless it's going to fail completely. But if it's at a new recovery high, that's really important. 30-year continuous bond. But it did make peak D. Remember how important the Ds are. And look at this weekly chart. Doji candle, two Chapman Wave, two bar reversal on the uh, the week of the 30th of August. Uh, continuous contract, 66, uh, 166 and 25, 30 seconds. Next day, 166 and 23, 30 seconds. And then you have a big red candle. It's usually a tip off to say, wow, be careful. You made the dreaded H pattern. Yeah, you took out the low of 157, 17, 30 seconds. Um, that's the one on the 13th. We took it out last week, closed well below, trading under it now. So this week we can't close above, nicely above 157.17. It's a real problem. We'll see what happens. The week is young. This has barely started. Now we're going to go to uh, right here. I want to go to the uh, questions I had. Yeah, so Curo, uh, you know, that's a much different chart pattern. I like it. This is a much better looking stock. It uh, has super moved today, up 5.64%, up 83 cents of 15.63. And uh, the weekly chart is making that V-shaped pattern. I like it very much. So, yes, this is good. If you're long, just stay long. If you're not long, why don't you see if you can get at 15, between 15.35 and 15.03. Maybe start a position there because it's acting very, very nicely. Uh, it's doing something very different to the others. A question I had here about, yes, we've done Boeing. Oh, this keeps slipping. Huh? Let me just put that in here. One second. Yeah, so if you look at the chart of uh, Curo right now, uh, let me just get that to set up nicely so I can get my. Got it. Okay. So um, what we're looking at is within the context of some of the, some of the um, other oil sector stocks. This is Slumberger. Uh, this is a refiner, I believe, made a peak D top in the daily chart. Pulled back, holding very nicely, holding the 14 under the nine period moving averages. Weekly is improving. I am watching these closely. We did have a stock DO. This is Diamond Offshore. Uh, had it just briefly and then it pulled back. This is not a good of chart pattern. It looked like it wanted to break out. It hasn't has got it's gone sideways. A lot of these older ones companies have gone sideways. I, I, I think it must be dog, dog bogged down. Uh, by many others. MGM question in the den about MGM, MGM A, peak A, then it goes under A, B, C, leg D. D in the daily. Look, let me just do that again. Find the lowest low bar, nearly count each successively higher peak. That's A, but then that becomes an A minus because you have to find every peak. So that's a little peak under it. And it's higher than the low was made. And then that's a B. And then that's a C. And now you get your D. So this is in leg D, holding very well, considering it's a D. The weekly chart's improving. So MGM, yes, good eye code in the den. Uh, MGM's doing very nicely. Uh, that makes the whole area 3130 right now. Um, I would say the whole area of 30.60 to 30 is going to be key support if it starts to fail again. So far, this is very good action. Question I had about, yeah, we did Boeing. Um, let me just do Boeing again because it might have changed since then. It's even higher. It's at 1460. Yeah, so the shorts are covering. You know, this is news. You've got a whole a month and a half to go. Anything can happen in that month. Yes, you are. No, you aren't. Yes, you are. Uh, no, you can. No, you can't. I, I, just be careful there. I do believe that Boeing is one of the premier, was one of the premier companies. There's a lot going on here. The backlog, I don't think the backlog 
even if the backlogs change, I heard it was 15 years or something. It was multi years. So you could lose a lot of backlog. It doesn't, doesn't look great looking out. But wow, this could keep you in business very nicely for the next couple of years. They have to solve this and they will solve it. And it'll be maybe aggressively solved. But I'm sure they're going to do something. All right. So a um, couple of questions came in. Yes, X, we're looking at X, which is uh, the U.S. still holding nicely at 13.58, up a penny. You're looking at um, nicely above the 9 period moving average. I like to do this. I see this pattern, and I immediately go rectangle formation, should retest the high, and then go just slightly above and then pull back into the rectangle. And if it pulls back, it's got a lot of support at the 9 period moving average of 13.01. And... 1267. So this rectangle I'm putting in just to say at this particular point, let's see how that uh, that all works out. The question about the SMHs. Yeah, the SMHs are making a high level consolidation. Now, the question is, uh, will the Boeing action um, really be good for the SMHs? I think I'm treating them separately now. My, my, my thing right now is that the um, that the S S semiconductor index right at 132.77, down 44 cents. I, I think it's starting to struggle. The MACD is very good. Stochastic's really good at 89%. The on-balance volume says it's a little toppy right here. The weekly chart says, wow, this has been fantastic action. You should be able to pull back a little bit. And I'm suspecting that the whole 131 to 129 area is going to be key over the next few days. Hey, if it breaks out and goes sharply above 135.50, that's going to be very impressive because it'll have to be called a recycle to the upside. But at this particular point, I think it was just saved a few minutes ago by Boeing's rally. Um, but it does say that it didn't break under Friday's low. So keep in mind that 131.43, you want to see a close under that. And it needs to happen in the next two days. As soon as it starts to make lower lows, then I think you'll start to see lower highs. I consider this to be because the, the moving averages are so strong. This is all a, this is a digestive process that's going on right now. So unless the SMHs tumble under under 129 to the 12830 area, that's the only time you're going to see that fast moving average really start to get close to the 14 period moving average. It's going to take a lot. So it might be time, but I do think the process has begun of this digestive phase, and then I suspect that we'll have a bit of a rally into the end of the year. So let me just sum it up. I'm looking at this whenever the Dow manages to survive any sharp September, October decline, and this time it was not such a sharp decline, but it was a decline into the October 3rd low of 25,743. Um, that usually says any rally after that that goes to a new high suggests that over the next many weeks going into year end, there should be a close fairly close to the yearly high. That's just my reasoning on this whole thing. But in the interim, you could get a lot of choppiness, and that's what I'm expecting. I'll be right back. That was a chap and type from this is all. eight. If you're okay. in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you'd like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. 
Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. So now the Dow's up five, SP's down seven, so the SP is really lagging still with the QQQ index 100. You know, watch this closely because, yes, you, you don't need much in the Dow. You just, you've got 30 stocks and you've got these crazies that, that do big moves up and down, and that's been impacting the Dow. That's what's held it up. That's why I drew the rectangle in here, but that doesn't, so far, it doesn't change my outlook that uh, we, we, we're having a sideways consolidation. In the 120 minute chart, let me just show you this. No, I'm sorry, in the daily chart, that was the 120 minute chart. We made a peak at that 27,000. Uh, all time high, 27,774 high of the 7th of November. Then we pulled back and went up. And then what I drew in for subscribers, you can see this for my daily. I give a very comprehensive newsletter every day. And I said we should be pulling back here. Well, we did pull back. We pulled back to 27,517. Now, 517, we're up 160, 160 points from that low. I mean, this is impressive. And now I have to do this. See, this is the chapter. Right, let me show you the techniques that we will be discussing in my webinar coming up a week from Tuesday night for subscribers. Is this this cup and Chapman wave, uh, cup and ladle breakout pattern, which went all the way higher. You see the green line here, and then the ladle starts to turn over, and that says that right here. We should start to see some kind of toppiness. You could even make a little cup formation uh, like that right here. But at this particular point, with the unbalanced volume right here, um, in the daily chart, the way that we've come down using time, actually, let me go to this one here. I think it's a little easier to see. Yeah, there it is. So if I can use this one here. All right, there it is. So if you remember, we had that peak D, bad news sell cloud cover um, way back in April. We were able to get short the day before the high, and it plummeted down to the June 3rd low, which we were able to buy for subscribers. Ran up, and then we got a sell signal at seven points from the, from the high we went short. And that was another bad news cloud cover plummeted down, made the H pattern, which went to a lowercase m, and then gapped up huge. So we had to just wait, got another sell signal um, with a bad news cloud cover, came down, hit this trend line, actually hit it exactly, and then ran up. And in this move up, I had this right here as a bad news cloud cover, but then we broke to a new all-time high. Uh, sorry, we broke to a leg D above the rectangle high. That said to me, something's not quite right. So we tightened the stop. We got stopped out. And now we've had another move to the upside 
I don't know if this is going to be the one. I don't know if I should even put this in, but I'm just saying that right here, there's a chance for another rectangle formation, sideways formation. But you can see the steepness of the mag of the green nine period exponential moving average. That is really sharp. So it's going to take a huge amount of selling to get this to turn down. Look, this one took 14 sessions before the moving averages crossed negative. So I'm just saying that this is the area that I'm anticipating, stalling action. Also, if I go to this here using the Chapman Way methodology of um, right here, INDU. So the Dow broke above the 27,529 high. So sometimes it goes a little higher, but you can see the 10 minute has automated Chapman Wave resistance is green 27,725 and 27,908. Um, once you break above that, you start to, to, you can go higher. There's no question about it. Then there's a lot of resistance levels right at the 28,000, but hey, that's quite a bit away from here. So I'm just showing you that I'm saying that there are certain aspects to it that say to me, just be a little careful. Here's the resistance level in the S&P at 3090. We're at 3085 right now. We have gone a little high, but this is going to be very important. Um, and that's 3105 in the 120 minute chart, 3080, 3099, all levels of resistance in the uh, weekly chart. And if you go to the QQQ, NDX 100, that has broken all the daily resistance levels. Now you've got 200.83. It's exactly where we are right now as resistance. And in the 10 minute chart, and 202.40 in the 120, and then a whole bunch in the weekly chart starting at 201.10. So we're getting to areas of resistance that I would anticipate. It's just going to give a stalling motion. How deep we go it has to be a little later on. I think we have to get through a couple of days here before we can really tell. Next thing I wanted to show you is uh, where was it? The IWM, Russell 2000. That has a series of resistance levels at 159.60. We're at 158.44. So I, I'm just thinking that this is a good opportunity for the market to take a breather. But I suspect before the breather is finished, there's going to be one sudden slide that just kind of scares everyone. So let me just show you something else here. Look, wheat, just wheat, and the continuous contract. Oh, did I just hit the wrong thing? Yeah, I did. Let's go over here. W REIT has made the H pattern and is it going to make that high that was made recently a high of, of consequence that it's going to take quite a bit of, of time before we can get back there. There's the dreaded H, there's that arch formation. So watch this closely. Um, 501, this called a 500 is really important support. It's at 506 and a half uh, soybeans. Trading much deeper down. Look at this. Stop legs, stock legs C made a high round about 960 uh, back in mid October. Trading right now at 917. Uh, that's not that's not good news. And if you look at corn, corn is trading also down at uh, 374 minus three and a quarter. So this is a very specialized market. Look at this. If you if you take a uh, look at silver. Silver is trying to find support right at the 200 period exponential moving average, having gone to a lower low in the weekly chart in that H pattern. It makes it very important that it, it actually closes above on the week, it needs to close above 16.94, the low in the continuous contract of the week of the 4th of October. So that's going to be very important. Uh, next thing I want you to do that, oh, utilities, XLU, haven't updated them for a little while. They are plunging right now. That's kind of, look, this is the monthly. The monthly is saying there's a chance that the XLU is made a top of some significance, meaning time and some price. Uh, what would your target be on ZAG, Z-A-G-G? -G? Uh, so let's see. Oh. Zag. What does Zag do again? Zag is Zag Inc. That's what it does. Zag Zag Inks. I don't know. Okay, what's my target? Let's just do this real quickly. A low bar. And so the techniques I'm going to show you are how I'm going to start counting. I'll take a blank chart and we'll just do it and I'll talk about it out loud on what we're looking at. Um, 
A, B, A. Yeah, I like that candle four months ago in Zag, and I like the action now. I think Zag has made a turn, I think at 8.48, trading up 0 0.01. Um, it's turning the whole area at 8.48, it's turning 8, 8.10 to 7.80 into key support. I like the action, yes. I, I used to have this notated, I haven't got it now. Uh, Paula says, oh, Uber, Uber co-founder director Travis Kalanick sold more than half a billion dollars worth of stock last week off the company lockup period. I know we were talking about it, Tommy and me, earlier on in the show at 10 o'clock. Look at this, Uber. I'm trying to find some I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as our number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. So what I'm going to be doing in my webinar coming up Tuesday week for subscribers to my opening call, you can become a member. Just go to the front page of TFNN and sign up. I'm going to be showing you how you can just draw simple trend lines. Look at this beautiful support that had a bounce in the XLE monthly chart after making that top at 101.52 in a beautiful up channel, and then at an inside track uh, resistance level, pulls back, and now it's testing, testing, testing. At 53.36 in December, it tested that exact trend line support, and it ran up, but not very much. It got stopped at the 14 period, the black line, the 14 period moving average, pulling back, and now it's struggling to get over the nine, the pink nine period moving average. So I teach you all these very simple techniques, techniques that you can use uh, if you don't have the, most of you have the tools on your trading software platform, but if you don't, you can just type this, just print it out, 
and use a, tra a ruler, a trend line, uh, great, works well. So these are the techniques. I'll show you how you can use the moving averages, why I put the stochastic above the MACD, sorry, why I put the MACD above the stochastic, um, a whole bunch of things like that. How you can use the green fast moving average as a good guidance, why I don't just use the MACD and stochastic as I instruments for trends. They have to be accompanied by other things. Just real simple things. I'll, I'll try to stick to just a... The, the key ones that we're looking at right now in all our positions. And um, yeah, our positions have done very nicely. Even today, we've got a couple that are acting well. Um, we still only in long stocks, but we have uh, two short positions. The initiation positions, I suspect that I need another couple of days to see if they can garner the kind of downside strength. We'll see what happens. It's a process, and I'm making a big deal that it's a process. I'm not expecting a, a, a three to six hundred point uh, smash to the downside unless it's really bad news. It's just not going to happen unless it's just really bad news, and it has to be persistent. So I just think it's uh, there's a chance of over the next couple of weeks just lower lows and lower highs, and then we want to be looking at the upside. Maybe I'm wrong that it's upside now, but I think we've got a little time left. So. We got Steve Rhodes coming out, Dave White, and then Tom, Tom O'Brien. I'll be back tomorrow. Check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. Hope to see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Watch this market. Still a consolidation going on. Be back tomorrow. See you then.